Before we start today's show, we would like to share a clip from a live Metallica recording from 1987. It's just the intro, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the metal. Roll the clip. I love that. Um, I'm going to put the link to that song in the description, and here's the show. Alright, welcome to the Scary Door, where <laughs> shit gets real. Uh, today we are joined by Lucas, aka Mr. Goldenbaum, and Ballistic, of, well, Ballistic. Of the Billy Sex. Billy Sack. And uh, going to be getting into some stuff today, uh, mostly just, you know, hypotheticals, couple stories, and, you know, just whatever the fuck we want to talk about. So uh, hold on to your dookie, it's about to get spooky. Um, Let's right, do guys. it. Uh, so first thing I wanted to uh, to bring up today was we we didn't get to do the 3D printing last time, so, well, we'll do that towards the end, but uh, time travel. So, if you had, like, one of those fucking uh, Bill and Ted, you know, excellent adventure phone booth time machines, where and when would you go? What are the rules here? No rules. Oh, well, the, there's sort of, like, you know, basic time travel guidelines, like, you know, don't kill your own family. Oh. But, you know, it's, you can go anywhere, anytime, including the future. So, let's hear it. Ballistic, go first. It's obvious go to the future to see how I do. Like, how, how successful I am, I guess. <laughs> what a joke. That's what I'd do. <laughs> Honestly, I'd probably just, like, go through time, like, stealing valuable shit, and then just live in large well, here. Well, you didn't really explain the guidelines. I thought I had to be realistic. <laughs> that, how is that not realistic? <laughs> Well, you said there's some guidelines. And... The basic guideline is don't do anything that will fuck up your own timeline. Don't kill yourself or anything that would kill you or erase you from existence. Well, that's no fun. All right. So so what would you guys do? What would I do? I'll show you yeah. what I'd do. I would go and see this. You can read it. See what? I would travel into the past. And see how the fuck this happened. Whoa, that's some shit right there. I I would go back and try to see the battle. Yeah. And you know, because it's like any time, any place, I I'd want to see like all the conspiracy shit. You know, like the JFK thing. You know. Oh like yeah. Twenty two sixty three. I got gotcha. you. Find out what really happened. Here, try to read that out. As if you're, uh, like a narrator or something. Who? You can do it, Jacob. Okay, like the so actual quote. It was the 22nd of November, what? 1963. Dealey Plaza, Dallas, Texas. Where, where did this come from? Eleven twenty two sixty three, man. Reading it out. Is that what you meant, read it out like a narrator? Yeah. Yeah. Keep going. Uh, shit. I don't know. It's, uh, uh, President Kennedy was in his motorcade. He had just arrived. It was a hot day. Worker Lee Harvey Oswald was in the, s wherever the fuck he was in the building, eating fried chicken and drinking Coke. <laughs> his, his rifle, his mail order rifle lay by his side. He had blood on his mind. And, um, like, you know, all these years later, you know, we still don't know what the fuck happened. Mm -hmm. Either that or the government's covering it up. Well, what do you think? Um, uh, it's either something to do with, you know, Cuba and Russia. Or, now, I'm not, like, a conspiracy person, but, you know, I highly doubt that, you know, because his, his brother, you know, Bobby Kennedy... 
convinced him not to ride with the protective shield over the car because he said, the people of Dallas, you know, you need to be closer to them. And so his brother convinced him not to have the bulletproof shield over the car, you know, like the bubble, like in the Pope mobile. <laughs> and yes, there's a Pope mobile. The Pope rides in the giant bulletproof bubble. Um, and, you know, both JFK and his brother, you know, were, were fucking Marilyn Monroe. And, you know, she died mysteriously, you know, of a drug overdose, but there was no, there, the coroner report said there were no drugs in her stomach and no, uh, trace of them in her mouth or throat. And, you know, there were signs of a struggle. Her body was not in the position that, uh, you know, would be the sign of an overdose and her diary was missing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the whole thing is sort of twisted but mm. and you know jfk's head snapping back and then snapping forward you know two holes in his head uh you know missing bullet all of a sudden they misplace his brain after you know <laughs> so there's no ballistic evidence and you know i just think it's all kind of fucked up you know there's there's something sketchy there and you know i don't care if it's over 50 years ago uh, it's, you know, we deserve the truth. Mm. But back to, back <clears throat> to the topic, what about you guys? Um, read what I posted in Skype as a narrator as well. Alright. Just the, uh, just the quote. Colin, I don't see anything. Uh, nothing popped up? Huh. It shows that you're writing. No, I... Oh. Yeah. You didn't, that's why. You didn't write me. <laughs> Did you like not hit enter? No. Uh, fuck. Hold on. I need to. I need to bring this down. Like I need to. Damn it. Hold on. There's the. There should be a thing that. Uh, hold on. How do you pronounce that? What? The hoos hoosers hussers. Just. I, it's just pronounced hoosers. No. All right. Uh, all right. We saw it. The Hoosers. Hoosers? Yeah. Okay, we saw it. The Hoosers let loose on their horses. God, what power. They ran through the smoke, and the sound was like that of a thousand blacksmiths beating with a thousand hammers. We saw it. Jesus Maria. Or is that Jesus? Jesus Maria. Jesus Maria. The elite lance is bent. Oh, fuck, hold on. <laughs> my, my computer is glitching. Right, where was I? The elite's lance is bent forward like the stalks of rye, driven by a great storm, bent on glory. The fire of the guns before them glitters. They rush, they rush on to the Swedes. Uh, hold on, computer, slow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, they crash into the Swedish ritters, overwhelming them. They crash on into the second regiment, overwhelmed. Resistance collapses, dissolves. They move forward as if, or <laughs> they move forward as easily if they were parading on Grand Boulevard. Hold on, my computer's glitching again. Uh, on a Grand Boulevard, they slice without effort through the whole army already. The next target, the regiment of horse guards. Where stands the Swede King or Carol, and the guard already wavers. That's it. Sorry, I couldn't read it all altogether. It was my computer kept screwing up. <laughs> Ballistic, you want to give it a go? Did you go? See, seeing how hard it was for, uh, <laughs> for I couldn't do it, I probably won't. You don't want to well, deal with your because, Russian? Like, I can only see a tiny portion of the text, and I was trying to scroll through, but every time I hit the button, it jumped like a crazy amount. <clears throat> uh, is it, yeah, I... You want to do it with your Russian accent? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a master of Skype, so I, I can read the whole narrative. <laughs> All right. We saw it. The you were... pineapples let loose on their horse. Nah, the okay. That doesn't out. sound good at all. They ran through the pineapple, and pineapple was like that of a thousand yeah. pineapples. Yeah, let's just skip it. Third, third. All right. Yeah. <laughs> back to time just... travel. Back to God time damn travel. it. So, uh, yeah, JFK, what would, what would you guys go see or do? I already gave you my uh, 
idea. In the future to see when pineapples take over the world. No, that was ballistic. That was ballistic. All right, but so what would you be doing? I, I would go back, go back in time and see that battle. Oh, that one that was just described. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds cool. Or like. I don't know, man. Like, I'd want to go, like, see all the great, you know, conspiracies. You know, like Boston Massacre. You know, see what really happened. Uh, oh, I, I want to go back and see 300. How it actually went down. Yeah, that'd be the <laughs> shit. See if he actually well, shouted. Boston this is really a conspiracy. Because uh, we actually went there. Daily Plaza? Uh, yeah. Um, well, oh, Ma Boston Mass, sorry, Boston Massacre. Never mind. Oh, yeah, I've been there. I was thinking of the Boston bombing. No, those are two different things. The Boston Massacre was back in the, <sighs> the Revolutionary days. Yeah, yeah, I remember. And, uh... God, how much I hate U.S. history. <laughs> the class, the class, not... not I was not gonna say, U.S. history is the shit. No, I just hate the class. Yeah. Why is your teacher, like, a total douche cracker? No, I already had that class, and yeah, she was. She was. Yeah. Um, now, I remember uh, Ballistic had a good food poisoning story, so we should each... Uh, topic right now is, all right, what's your worst food poisoning slash throwing up or violently ill story? And uh, let's start with Ballistic, because uh, he gave me a short overview before, mm -hmm. and it sounded pretty funny. So, uh, Ballistic, the floor is yours. Yeah, I had two times. The most recent one was actually about probably a month ago. I was eating a corn dog, and I took a huge chunk in it, and then my sister walks into the room, and she says, why is there blue stuff on that corn dog? And I turned it around, and I realized there's blue moss all over it. Um, and I got food poisoning from that. Wow, gee, you really know how to set a scene. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then also when I was younger, I don't know what happened. I just... I was like probably like five, five to seven years right, old. Let, let me give a crack at that story. There I was, famished. All that we had was corn dog. So I raised it up and took one mighty bite of it. Delicious as though it may be. But hark, my sister came in the room. What art thou doing? Has thou, fuck, I, I'm not doing this in old English. I don't know. No, dude, I had enough of Shakespeare. I had to memorize a whole page of Shakespeare poem for my teacher. And I didn't even get a good grade on it, because I yeah. forgot to memorize Alright. Um, and then also one time I just had to like actually like sit in the bathroom, like I brought my sleeping bag in there, and I had to like sleep there, because I kept throwing up and I couldn't stop. There, that's my story, that's my life. Lucas, you had a pretty good one. Did I? Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> so, I don't think it can quite compete with uh, how epic yours was, Ballistic. I know. And that, that mighty corn dog of, of hell that you stumbled across and hell, you have to thank your shit. like the moldy corn dog. <laughs> I know, man. Uh, how the fuck do you not notice blue mold on a corn dog? <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, he was already like. 20 bites in, like, finishing up the last little bit, and he's like, oh, what the fuck's this? And I oh. mean, you would, you would taste it, too. <laughs> like, that rancid food taste, like, the second it hits your tongue, you, you know, you feel that vomit coming on? It was, I think it was freaking warm as hell. I, I think it was, like, really hot, because I think I over, I over microwaved it, and, uh, it was burning my tongue, so I probably couldn't taste anything. Right. Oh, Lucas, your story? Uh, give me, give me, like, a minute. No, All right. uh, you want to pull it together while I tell one of mine? Yeah, yeah. All right, so there I was, Narlins. Twas the city. I mean, the fuck. Twas the year of 2012, and there we were. You know, it was our last day. We were packing up. You know, headed back to Texas. When we saw a sign, thirteen oysters. Six dollars. Now, for those of you who don't know, fifty cent oyster and a half shell, 
is an amazing deal. You know, fresh, you know, top quality New Orleans oysters. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't see that every day. And there was a line going out the door, you know, people waiting to be seated. And so we, we pull the car over into this parking lot made of crushed oyster shells, and which is quite common down there. And, you know, we're sitting, we're waiting out there, 30, 45 minutes goes by, and we finally get a seat. And, you know, we go in there. You know, we, we order our appetizers. I get, you know, fried fried alligator nuggets, all that, which are fucking delicious, by the way. And our oysters come. You know, we get them. You know, we're, we're eating on them. I eat all 13 of mine, and my mom has two left over. And I think it was one of hers that did this to me. And, you know, we finish up. Oh, that meal was great, all this and that. And then we get in the car. We start driving. Headed down that long highway. And then all of a sudden, I feel my guts shifting. It's like that, you know, internal gut noises and stuff. And I'm like, I think I'm going to be sick. And so we pull over to the gas station, you know, get something to calm my stomach. And I'm like, I turn to my little brother and I say, because he can make a drink that, you know, will will cure anything. He calls it diabetes. <laughs> So he goes, he goes into the store, I go into, I get a couple of firecracker pickled sausages, also fucking delicious. It's an acquired taste, but if you don't like them, screw you. And, you know, we're back in the car. He has, he comes out with a package of pip, pixie sticks, five hour energy shots, a bottle of some energy drink and a 52 ounce Slurpee thing. You know, he had mixed it up. You know, the colors were all bleeding into each other. That he had mixed in, you know, numb skull energy, energy drink slushy. And he says, "Watch carefully, because this is going to cure you." He starts mixing it in. He rips the the tops off of, you know, like fifty fucking pixie sticks, and he dumps them in. And you can see the the color going through, and you know, the the carbon carbonation coming off the drink is making it puff like smoke. And then, you know, he pours in the, the energy drink and he's mixing it up and it's just looking like a fucking sorcerer's potion. And so he's like, drink the whole thing. And I'm like, I, I'm not sure. Drink the fucking drink. And so I'm like, all right, all right, dude. And so I drink, you know, like 75% of it. And, you know, I eat, I eat those two firecracker pickle sausages. And then all of a sudden, I'm just like, uh-oh. And we we just so happen to have like one of those little you know three or four gallon trash trash cans in the car, and I'm like, just you know, on a dime, I'm just like, you know, just like vomiting my guts out. And <laughs> kind of like a uh, Family Guy. Exactly. Clam chowder. Challenge. And just this the smell of pickled sausages, half digested seafood, diabetes. And all this stuff flying out my mouth and nose, full force, just a constant jet stream of it, and I can't stop. And I'm having to roll down the window and bail out the bucket and keep vomiting. And, you know, the, the side of the car is just caked with this stuff. And, you know, we, we pull over quick, and, you know, we're at this gas station. I'm vomiting off to the side of the car. My dad, you know, mumbling under his breath with one of those car squeegees is wiping off the side of the car. And, you know, my little brother's laughing and taking pictures. And so <laughs> we, you know, we pull over to this cheapo motel and, you know, I'm, I'm sh like shaking uncontrollably, vomiting, vomiting, vomiting. Even though there's nothing left, I'm, my body's just still hitting the eject button over and over, vomiting that sickly bile. I'm dry heaving. I can't stop. It's, it's agonizing. And so... You know, I'm still sick the next day, and we brought this little motel ice bucket, you know, with us so I could still throw up. And to this day, we still have that ice bucket actually in the cabinets, and it's used as, like, a cereal bowl and all that stuff, as disgusting as it may seem. So what got you to uh, do it in the first place again? Like, what did your brother tell you? Uh, that, that drink that he called diabetes would settle my stomach. <laughs> you bought I that? Say, I would be scared that my brother's trying to kill me with that. Yeah, you bought that? No. Yeah. You have to understand 
I was in a desperate situation, and my brother can mix the hell out of a drink. Yeah, I still right, <clears throat> right. And uh, under under normal circumstances, had this not been food poisoning, I'm sure that that would have helped. And you know, the pickled sausages and the drink probably just you know. Yeah, why pickled sausages if you knew yourself? Because they're fucking delicious. Um, but. The, the pickled sausages, the oysters, the, the diabetes, all that stuff coming back up. Because <laughs> I had eaten and drank all that stuff, drink, drank, drunk, all that stuff, within 30, 45 minutes. And, like, yeah, I was, that, it wasn't was just a regular sick. stomach full. Like, I was full, full, full. And I had chugged that diabetes down, uh, you know... I fit as much in, into my stomach I could. You know that time where it's like you're you're so full that it hurts to move. Unless unless dessert's like right next to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it was just like, and now the floodgates will open. <laughs> it was, it yeah, was... when I was food sick, I didn't even eat bread because so like I don't you know. Didn't why even you didn't bread? Eat no, wow. I did not even eat did bread. Wow. Did you did you even pineapple? There's maybe, always well, maybe here and there, but besides <laughs> the point, um, yeah, I couldn't even eat bread, so I don't know how you ate all that stuff in your life. Well, it was, you, food poisoning normally hits people really fast, but... How fast would you say? In this, in this scenario? Mm-hmm. Uh, it took 30 to 45 minutes. But Mine was not that, like, mine was it, not that fast. It was fast. coming on. And I could feel it, but I kept, you know, I kept my stomach shut. Like, I was able to hold it in and, like, not throw up. And I think I think the, the diabetes and the pickled sausages were the, the straw that broke the camel's back. Huh. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, and it was, to this day, that is still my worst food poisoning story because the, the pain that I went through and the, the things that I tasted... Terrible. <laughs> like I, my stomach is is heaving right now just thinking about it. Oh, uh, Lucas, what's your story? I don't think I can beat that either. Um, ah, I win. Oh, well, I'll yeah, give it a shot it was though. Agonizing. It was. So, mine didn't hit me like a like a brick like it did you like thirty minutes or something. Uh -huh. Me, me, my dad, and my brother were. Both eating some fucking peanuts from Walmart. <sighs> Those uh, the cheap peanuts? brand. No, honey roasted, like some oh, cheap dude, brand. Boiled peanuts are the shit. I don't think they're they're offered here. I've yeah, never you seen. You can only them. find them in like the deep south. Exactly. Know, like Georgia, Atlanta. I mean Georgia, Alabama, like that part of the deep south. Yep. So like, we, like the like the balls deep part of the deep south. Like Florida. No. Well, some parts of Florida, like the really trashy parts of Florida, which is most of Florida, but <laughs> if, if you're from Florida and you're getting offended, I'm sorry. Blame Jacob. Uh, side note, if, if you are offended by this show, uh, we're, I'm not changing for anybody. I don't give a shit. You can go fuck yourself and listen to another podcast. This is who I am and these are who these guys are. Uh, freedom of speech, America, and fuck you, that's why. Key West is really nice. Yeah, you can speak for yourself, but uh, Key West was really nice. Well, yeah, I mean, time. South Beach, Key West, Tampa Beach, uh, you know, all the... all the. I hated like, Miami. Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, Fort Lauderdale's nice, but it's just like old people. A lot of Cubans. Yeah, a lot of Cubans. Yeah, they're, they're like playing chess everywhere. <laughs> like a lot of places Cuban, I go to. Cuban people are awesome. Oh, yeah. Like, one guy gave, uh, when we were there, he just gave us a tour of the entire area, and it, it, it was, like, out of nowhere. Yeah. If you're a Cuban and you're listening to this, you rock. Uh, go Cuban people. And, uh, yeah. So. I feel bad for the shit they have to go through. Yeah. Like, that's that sucks, man. Like, I knew this dude who, who immigrated, like, illegally from Cuba, and he got, like, a... A citizenship thing here and mm -hmm. uh i mean this this the stories of like what he and his parents had to go through i mean 
Wow. Oh, what you were saying about the peanuts? Oh, yeah, so dude, those peanuts were like... You know shit was wrong with those peanuts, but we didn't know it at the time. There was, like, nothing obvious. And I'm assuming they were, like, expired or something, even though they weren't expired on the, like uh... Will goes back. rancid. Well, I mean, there was nothing wrong with them when we were eating them. It's just, it came back, and it was terrible. So, what happened is, at first it hit my brother, like, really fast, I think. And he was just out for the, uh, like, I I'd say that entire day. But it didn't hit me and my dad until like the next day. So the next morning, I wake up and I just feel shit. My stomach hurts. It's like I'm, I'm gonna like, well, obviously throw up. But it was like, it, like there was a lot more that was gonna happen than just me you throwing knew up. It was coming on. Yeah, yeah. I was in the bathroom for like 30 minutes, just just trying to deal with it. My head was hurting like crazy. My stomach was just violent, violently fighting of whatever the fuck was going on, and I just felt weak. I, I couldn't do anything. I, it was really hard to move, and it, I just felt like shit. I had never felt this bad in that's, my that's life. one of the worst kind of food poisonings, where yeah. you know, it's not a not a quick, agonizing thing, and then it's over. No. It's the, it's the, the long, drawn-out one, and if you don't throw up, but you know it's going to happen. No, no, I was throwing up. I was throwing up. It just so happened that this thing was not going away. It was the worst feeling I had ever felt. So I, I threw up the entire morning, but the problem was it was my last day of work, and I had to uh, return a lot of like the files and equipment and all this kind of stuff I had for, for work uh, to my place. Otherwise, they, they really couldn't get shit done. Uh, so it was like, I, I have to do this. So what I did is I went into my car. I fucking... Put on my game face, buckled up my belt, and began to uh, drive to work, which normally would be like a 30-minute drive. But at the pace I was going, it was like a fucking hour. So I, I was just driving in my car, like from stop sign to stop sign, just, just trying to fight on. I was on the highway. I would have to uh, pull over uh, multiple times and put on my emergency lights just so I could regain composure, because I felt like I, like my head was killing me. My Every time you're at a red light, stop sign. <laughs> See, I, I couldn't throw up. That's the thing. I had to have my game face on. Every time I came close, I had to like regain my composure. I just had to stop and just, just think about it. And somehow I eventually make it to work, you know, full suit, full everything. Like, this isn't like <laughs> normal work. Like, I actually had to wear a full suit and everything. Uh, so I, I couldn't really afford to throw up. Uh, so I went there, I, I gave back all my shit, and I, I, I felt like I was just going to clam chowder or whatever, just all over oh, everyone and oh, the equipment. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's exactly the way I was feeling the entire time I was there. I'm like, fuck it, I'm going home. And I had to uh, drive back an entire hour, pull through all the shit. I finally got back, and then I was fucking in the bathroom for like an hour, and then I was just out cold for the whole day. And my dad had the same thing. You get all the body aches and stuff too. Everything, everything that could. It was, it was the worst feeling you could ever feel because yeah, it was. It wasn't just it's one like you're thing. You're freezing cold, but you're sweating gallons. Yeah, it was just everything bad. Everything bad. Yeah, dude, that sucks. Though that now, Sorry? I, now every time I feel bad or like something happens, maybe I'm sick or something. Like, well, it can't be as bad as that one time, where it was absolute hell. Well, you also got to be trouble, I mean, be trouble, you also got to be careful in where you throw up, because you can get in trouble. Yeah. No, if I had to throw up, I would have thrown up fucking in the highway, like, I, I would have, at a stop sign, I would have just popped open the door, threw up. <laughs> yeah, I've seen, I, like, I've seen some people do that, like, when uh, we were coming back from the mall, uh, we were at a red light, and this guy just pops open the door, and, like, puts his face to the to the asphalt, and just, like, Vomits all over the place. Goes the door, drives that off. face all up in that ass. And then la later, <clears throat> we see a cop pull him over, and uh, uh, and he's lying on the floor throwing up. Yeah. I think well, he, he could have been over. there to help him, because you know that's that's their their job. Oh yeah, that's yeah. never their job. They don't and, do that. Like, I had twisted or sprained both of my ankles once when I slipped. And I was, you know, I had to walk like three blocks to this hospital. And, you know, when I was almost there, this cop pulls up next to me. He's like, 
He's like, hey, man, what's wrong? And I'm like, tell him. And he's like, here, I'll give you a lift. And, you know, he flips on his sirens and drives me there and, you know, helps me up the stairs and all that shit. And, you know, there's just because cops have a bad reputation, you know. I, I think they have bad. a bad reputation for a reason. And I don't believe they're all bad. But they the, the priorities are just so different than what they should be. No, I, I, I don't hate cops. I actually love cops, and I, I think that their job is tough as hell, and people bullshit them, like, all the time, and it's... Yeah, it's, so, no, so there, are, are, the there are a lot of... This, we salute you, and, you know, keep that shit up. Here's the thing, a lot of them are doing that tough shit, but then there's that other, other fuckers who just, like, sit there all day with the fucking radar in, like, the, the nicest neighborhood ever, and then just, like, try pulling that shit at, like, five over, four over. I mean, so, these guys have to meet a quota. Like, they See, that, that's, that's the thing. The quota basically changes their priorities. Like, that, that shouldn't be their priority. That's not what they're there for. There are some of them that abuse the power and <clears> have <throat> to meet that quota. But, I mean, these guys are working their asses off and, you know... If, yeah, yeah, sitting there with the radar. I know, so dude. So many stupid people, so many drunk people, so many people resisting, so many people giving them a hard time. And, That's you know, true, but they, a lot. they still don't have their priorities straight. No, some some are bad, but like when you say good neighborhood, I mean my area is a really good neighborhood. I I live in the Starwood area. A lot of a lot if of it's a ridiculously good neighborhood like that, why the hell are you just like chilling there? Trying to see if people this are going is, three, this four is a over. Ridiculously good neighborhood, but everybody from California is really bad at driving, and that's no, latency. See, that's not a problem. Man. Well, I, I'll agree that everyone like. I feel that more Californians are not that good at driving. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just like saying, okay, just because a lot. These of opinions Asian are in California. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. If you're Asian and you're listening to this, no disrespect, you know, but there are stereotypes. Like, reason, where I came not from, the driving is perfectly fine, but then when we came here, the driving was, like, really bad. I, I, okay, I won't blame her. Myself. Sir, do you realize you were driving 18 in a 15? Yeah, sir, I'm going to have to give you a, a ticket. It is really strict. Um, some people, like, there's a construction zone and, uh, and right next to our school, and it's a school zone, and the police department's right across from our school. Speed limit is 20. If you go 21, 22, you get, you get pulled over. All right. Uh, I think we got sidetracked. What were we talking about? Uh, their priorities are fucked up. No, before that. Before we yeah, start talking. I, I, they I, suck? I disagree because... Um, Ballistic oh, yeah, the sucks? Thing. That's how we got sidetracked. Um, trying, to, trying to keep... You know, oh, if I got pulled over by a cop, I would have went like, hold on one second. And then just let it all go. Like right in front of them. Yeah. Fucking projectile. Yeah. Okay. Um. But but back to the show because I feel like we're getting a bit sidetracked. Um. Another thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about was Stephen King wrote this short story. Uh. When he was sick this one time, it's called uh, Word Processor of the Gods, and you know it was one of his stories that he wrote. You know when he was just you know getting off the ground. And the gist of the story is this guy you know, came into ownership of this word processor, which is sort of a high-tech typewriter that, you know, you can add and delete stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like a digital thing. And the, the powers of the typewriter are you can type anything into existence or type anything out of existence. Wow. Like, what do you do? Do you just, like, type it and then delete it and that edits, edits it out? Um, I haven't read the story in a while, but, yeah, I think that's the basic gist. Like, the delete button deletes it. And but you would have to type it first, right? Okay. So, so if you guys... if Hypothetical situation, all three of us in our separate, you know, lives each came into a word processor of the gods. What I want to go yours? last. I want to go last. Okay. Ballistic, what would you do with yours? I would type myself the good life, dude. Call the enemies. Erase that shit, dude. Yeah. You already know it, man. Yeah. Easy. Now, now, because a lot of people, you know, we want to hear it. So, in your own words, what do you consider the good life? Money, house, uh, good fortune. I mean, of course, yes, you'd want the money and everything, as well as I, I'd probably, I'd, pro I'd probably do some other practical stuff. Um, 
give myself a nice girlfriend, uh, get a nice car, nice house, bought a fortune, uh, try and live in a good area. Try, uh, like, I love animals, so I'd probably donate a lot to, uh, to, uh, animal shelters or I'll try and get rid of, uh, you know, bad stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Like, I live the good life, but at the same time, I'd also give back to people. Yeah. I think with mine, like, the first thing that I would do is just type up a giant fucking thing of money next to me. Or, you know what, scratch that. First thing I would do is I would get that house in Colorado, the one that I can picture in my own mind. You know, two stories, really nice, you know, hardwood floors, you know, state-of-the-art shit. Get myself that purple Lamborghini, get all that money and shit, you know, just, just edit out all the problems in my life. And, you know, I would give a shit ton of money to the New England Aquarium, which, you know, it's this, this fucking amazing aquarium up in Boston by the Boston yeah, Harbor. Cool. And, uh, you know, I, I have a, a short list of, you know, people that I would, you know, look out for, you know, get them, you know, get them some money, edit out their problems. And, you know, I'd have some fun too, you know, edit a couple things into existence. And, uh, of course, you know, I would make myself immortal. Yeah. Cause you know, you, you can't have fun without immortality. I'd probably like the thing that like everybody always ha everybody has a career that they want to do that's kind of kind of difficult but at the same time you kind of can do it. Yeah. Like I've always wanted to start a business. I'd probably try and start my business and uh, try and make it as a sex a su blah, 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 successful. That's what probably I would do because yeah. uh, you could live the good life, but at the same time, how much can you do? Yeah. And you guys remember that movie, uh, Chronicle? You know, the ones where those guys uh, find that thing underground. You know, it starts out, the main character is that kid that videotapes everything. And, you know, it's like this radi radiation thing that gives them all these powers and stuff. You know, it's like telekinesis and stuff. No, I've seen it. Um, well, for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, long story short... Uh, three guys um, get exposed to some sort of radiation thing or some out of this world thing, and then they discover that it has given them powers. You know, uh, basically just telekinesis. Therefore, you know, by will they can uh, move objects, uh, fly, um, super strength, all that, sh all that good stuff. And you know, I, I would want you know powers like that. You know, just like type that into existence for me. Uh, Lucas, how about you? What what is on your your mind for your word processor of the gods? Lucas, what was that? I said, uh, what would be on your priority list for typing up in your word processor of the gods? All right. So, what I do is I would uh, look at my school's tuition and make it like negative whatever the fuck I wanted. So I, I wouldn't have to pay for anything. I would uh, change the uh, lottery numbers to uh, whatever the ticket it was that I bought. Like I, I just type it up, change it. You are, you are aware that you can just type up some money, right? No, no, no. But I feel like uh, making it legit, you know. Oh yeah. So it's, it's like, like oh, I want jackpot. You know, two hundred billion dollars. Change up these numbers. Go buy a ticket. Yeah, I, I don't want to just like create money. You know, that would cost like inflation and all that kind of stuff. I just want to get the money. You know, yeah. It's, there's a difference. Yeah, um, that way, you know, it doesn't change the prices or anything. No, not at all. Yeah, no one feels a bit suspicious. <laughs> no one. You get all that money. Right, yes, I would. Uh, I'd go for like. Uh, you know how ca car companies have like some commercials sometimes, some kind of offers. I'd make up some like ridiculous offer, like be the first person to print this out, be standing here or something, and have like a penny or a dollar ready, and then you get your own car and like all this kind of stuff. So I'd be like doing all the things ready there with like a dollar, and then I would just like type it in and I'd be like, oh, congratulations! I'm like, damn, dude, I got here as fast as I heard about it. Oh, like uh, Dorito's Xbox One thing. <laughs> a whole bunch of you, you like I, I could do all these like creative things. 
Or like a Vegas thing. Just type yourself up a winning oh. streak. Hmm. A winning Dude, streak. imagine the three of us going to Sin City. No, I, I wouldn't like type up like some fake stuff. I, I'd be going in there and like maybe I'd be playing poker against other people. And I'm like, this guy now has a 2, a 3, a 6, and like a 9. And I have like all I need to do is some kicks. <laughs> or like just start making up all these hands. And I'm like, man, dude, you, you suck. Or, or, I'd give him a really good hand, have him play, like, a lot of money, and then, like, turn it into a shit hand, and then have him really reconsider what he was thinking. No. Yeah. That, that would be fun. And maybe, like, type yourself up, like, a, a real-life, uh, you know, luck charm or something that, that makes it happen. Nah, I don't need luck. I just make it happen. Yeah. And then with all that money, what I'd do is I would get a, uh, what's it called? I'd get one of those hot air balloons, and instead of, like, a balloon shape, I would just have, like, the like the shape of a, like, a fist and everything with the middle finger just pointing up. I was just about to say and, that. Uh, I was going to hear what you were going to say, and then <laughs> oh, or you can have just a giant middle finger floating in the air. Yeah, exactly. So I'd have this giant middle finger, and I would fly wherever the fuck I wanted. And what I'd have is, I'm thinking I'd, I'd give, yeah, I'd be a good guy, and I would get these lollipops, which would also have like a fist and a middle finger, and I would just like throw them off from the. Uh, from the hot air balloon, and they'd have like their own little uh, middle finger parachutes, and yeah, you know. <laughs> middle finger parachutes like that. Or you just throw your own Feed the like, world. middle finger parade walking down the street, you know, tossing candy out to the kids. Hey, fuck you, <laughs> fuck you too. Hey, buddy, go fuck yourself. No, the middle. No, what I would do is I would, in that typewriter, I would make the middle finger the the new uh, like high waving your hand. That that'd be the new thing. Like they they'd be yeah, switched. But what would be the insult? They'd be switched. Oh. Waving your hand would be an insult. <laughs> That's great. And and I would ban all pineapples. Well, isn't that like that old Zach Galifianakis movie where the middle finger's the greeting? Like Jefferson Morning to you or something? Where he works for the Jefferson Company? That'd be well, funny. Lucas, we're going to have a problem if you're going to ban pineapples. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm just gonna ban. Okay, fine. How about this? How about this? I will not ban pineapples, but I'll I'll change up like what pineapple will do, and have them be like the worst tasting like thing you could have, and then like uh, durian fruit, that fruit that smells so bad that it's like you can't bring it into buildings or uh, in taxi cabs in that one country. Uh, yeah, and then it would only grow in like a few places, and fuck, and it would give you like food poisoning. Or something uh, like that, and it would expire well, after like a day. That's in world. I would change that up. Yeah. And then it's I, like each each of us. All right. Have, all right. have the typewriter. No, no, no. This, this is how it's gonna go. Three timelines. This is how it's gonna go. I'm in my uh, typewriter. I would type into your guys's timeline, and then I would type away your guys's typewriters, and then I would yeah, be the only one. Yeah, I can. We are each in our own separate timeline. There is no connection between any of the three. The, okay, okay. There doesn't that. have to be a connection. I'll just make one. Oh, so it's like... <laughs> it doesn't have to exist or be possible. I'll make it possible, and then I'll create it. No, that's, that's, that's the one rule with this. Oh, really? Is There is no interference between any of the three timelines. Hmm. It's the one rule. Well, then what kind of problem are we going to have, Ballistic? Well, I don't know, because there's going to be a Ballistic in each one of our timelines. Well, he said he was going to have a problem with his Pineapple Army, if that's what I wanted to do. No, because I didn't know that we were all in, like, different timelines. Yeah, I didn't know that either. So, what, what, your, your argument again, Ballistic? That Lucas sucks? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, but that doesn't exist in uh, any timeline except for your own. Alright, let's make a pact. If any of us get a word processor of the gods... Get rid of pineapples. We, we, we pull this shit. Pineapple is, is terrible. No, I'll, I'll, I'll be floating around in my hot air balloon. I, I'd, like, travel the world. Your hot air balloon. I, I travel the world. Like, I'd visit, like, all, all the, uh, like, natural uh -huh. wonders and all these other things. I'd fly over the okay. pyramids. Let me, let me clarify. Two words. The word processor only works for you. 
Yeah. So nobody else can mess with it. Doesn't mean it's I... like it's indestructible. It only works for you, and you know it doesn't go awry. All right. Well, oh, if, shit. if ballistic, I mean, you don't have oh. to uh, ruin the typewriter. Let's say ballistic loses both his hands and he can't type. Well, he's fucked now because it doesn't work for anyone else. I have. Feet. Well, what what if what if he types with his nose or his yeah, hands I have feet, or nose? I can get someone else to type it for me. Nope, doesn't work. No, you else. you can't do that. That's, that's that's the rule. You're paralyzed. You're paralyzed. Then that'd be unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's bad. Um, apparently, so six fire trucks just like drove by. No. Let's do it. Is it in your complex? No, they drove by our complex. Though. I don't even know where the fire station, the fire. Is. Jacob, do you think I could do a good Let's Play off of that game? A what? Do you think I could do a good Let's Play off of that game? Uh, sure, why not? I showed you. It'd be kick-ass. This podcast has been running a little too long. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, yeah, I'm gonna I'm going to put this in two parts. Uh, you may want to edit it yeah, pretty I'm well. I'm going to go, because I'm going to go record some... Uh, but to wrap this up, uh, on a... Hold on, let me, let me redo that. Uh, so you guys want to wrap this up? Yeah, let's do it. Alright, so uh, thanks for tuning in. This has been The Scary Door. Uh, links to Mr. Golden Bombs and Ballistics channels in the description. Uh, like, comment, subscribe to all of our channels. Uh, go check out these guys' videos. They're great. If you're into gaming, awesome. If not, still check it out. And, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. See you, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Let me stop it.